I always do my lions with star blends. So I'm starting with white star blends and I am taking that over my eye all the way up to my eyebrow. And then I'm going to do a goatee shape at the bottom to start the lion's mane. And I think this is one of the features that really distinguishes it from a tiger versus a lion. Now I'm going to take my yellow star blends and I do kind of half circles above both eyebrows to create the ears. And then I pull that yellow down over my nose and into the center of my face. You want to pull the yellow out just about as far as the white goes. So you can imagine just a line going down from the ear to the corner of the mouth, and that is a good guide to follow. So at this point, I do like to add brown star blends to pull the mane out from the center part of the face. And then I also like to add some orange. I'll do orange on the inside of the ear and in between the brown and the yellow just to add some more color and some more contrast. But typically I do the brown outer part with star blends and then add a curly mane on teenagers, adults, or kids where I have enough room. A lot of times I find that kids that are smaller, there's not a lot of room to do the curly mane on the outside. So I'll just do a more simplistic outline and it's just a simpler version. And once you have a base that looks something like this, it is time to move on to outlining. I do prefer to outline in brown instead of black. It's less harsh and it just goes along with the theme of the lion and I like the way it looks. So I'm just going to go over both of my ears, do a little flicks on the inside. I like the ears facing out and I decided I just want a little bit more of a tuft of hair at the top, not so straight. So I added a little bit more star blends there so that I could do kind of just a little poof of hair at the top. It gives that nice kind of whimsical like young lion feel. And then I like to pull a line around the eyes just to outline them and define them. So I'm going to slow this down a little bit and talk about noses. You can tell here that I did my lion nose more squared off. It's got a harsher line at the top and it's bigger than say something I would do for like a puppy that would be more rounded or a cat that would be lower on the nose. So this gives it more of that king of the jungle, large defined nose. I'm also rounding out the edges from the outside part to the inner part here on the corner so that it's not harsh but it gives it the feel of a larger, more lion-like nose. So I hope you can see the difference here on how I do that. It's not very detailed, it's still very easy, but it gives it a stronger appearance than something I would do for a cat or a dog. Another way to distinguish your lion design from your cat or your puppy dog, where for the muzzle you would just do a kind of circular shape coming out from the lip and then curve it up, I like to pull out into more of a triangular muzzle, and this creates the illusion of a stronger beast, of a lion, something with a little bit more clout behind it. It's a very, very subtle change, but I think it makes a really big difference. So now moving on to our mane and the edge. If this was just a little kid or I didn't have room, I would just do some lines down no differently than how I would do a cat or a puppy dog. But when I have room, I really like to do just some whimsical curls to give it more of a realistic mane look. And it's very, very simple. And then I finish off the bottom part of the muzzle or goatee with just some flicks and lines for an outline and it just defines it and brings it all together. At this point you can also fill in the lip. I'm going to fill in my bottom lip with brown because I just want it to be kind of realistic. So I would definitely do this on a little boy, um, always with a disposable lipstick brush or I might do a color on a little girl as well, pink or red. A few dots on the muzzle and of course my my distraction came down to say hi to me and she was feeling very very cuddly so 
I talked to her for a minute as a lion. And it's at this point where I notice that one of my ears is a little bigger than the other. Not that big of a deal. It's not something I would notice on the job or really ever worry about correcting. But I did notice it later in this video. <laughs> so oops, it happens. Um, if you have time, you can absolutely add some shadowing into this design, which I'm doing. I'm just taking a wet brush and I'm reactivating some of that brown paint. I think Billy's still down here because I'm talking to somebody, so I must be talking to her, telling her to go to bed. <laughs> um, so I'm just pulling in some of some water really into some of those brown lines and then patting it out for some distinction. If you have time for this step, it does make a big difference in designs like this where there's not a lot of color, there's not a lot of depth. So if you can add that in, it it's great. If not, then don't worry about it. This is still so cute and impactful. You guys also know that I don't encourage outlining designs on the job, especially if it's a festival or a paper face, and I almost never outline anything in white, but I do have to say outlining the top of this in white brings up that white tone from the muzzle and gives it just a really kind of ethereal finished look that I liked very much. So if you have time for that step, by all means, do some outlining in white, do some highlighting on the nose. Whenever you have time to add those little details, it's always wonderful and impactful. However, I started as a festival face painter. That's how I started. And being able to do all those details on the job, that's not realistic. So just keep in mind what's realistic for you and do what you can on the job. So I'm going to go ahead and just outline the bottom in white as well, just to mimic the top so that I have a nice consistent design. And with the little curls on the edge, I kind of didn't know how to handle those because I don't typically outline this in white. So I did it very softly because I didn't really want it to overwhelm the mane that I had, but I wanted to make sure that everything flowed and was nice and cohesive. So I, add a f I added a few in there. I don't really think it's necessary on the mane at all. I don't think I would do it again. I also went ahead and added a few teeth just underneath my top lip and I would definitely do that for the little boys more so than the little girls because they like to be fierce. So I hope you guys liked this lion design. It was a specific request from a viewer, so I hope this helps you out. If you'd like to check out star blends, I do have links down below of my favorite star blends. As always, please like, subscribe. Thank you so much for following me, commenting, and supporting me and my channel. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you in my next video.